Horse Race is a great way to get students developing their speaking fluency. It's spontaneous, dramatic and a great way to finish off a class. I'm Will from Enchanted ESL and in this video I'll explain what Horse Race is, how to play it and how you can get the best out of it in your classroom. Horse Race is perfect for an excitable group. It's great with kids and teens and adults can love it as well. It's perfect with upper beginners and intermediates. Advanced students can enjoy it, but they're not really going to develop their speaking that much, and I would completely avoid it with absolute beginners. The game is best with three to eight students, but you can play with one or two as well. If you have more than 12, you probably want to divide the class into two separate games. All you need to play is a set of standard playing cards, or really any set of cards where there are four suits. Plus you'll need some paper and a pencil, and ideally four different coloured pencils. Oh, and also a big surface, like a table, where you can make the racetrack. If you're playing online, you probably want a deck of cards with you in person, but you can make the racetrack on PowerPoint or Google Slides or somewhere where you can share your screen. Now, there are two levels of this game. The first focuses completely on the commentary and the race is just a bit of fun, while the other, the higher level, has a betting mechanic to it. Don't worry, no actual money is involved. I'm about to explain how to play and in that I will identify which parts are exclusive to the betting version. So if you don't want to do that, you can ignore it completely. With younger or less advanced students, it's just enough to see which horse wins. Alright, so let's get to the rules. First we need to set up the racetrack. We take the four aces and line them up. This is the starting line. Then we shuffle the rest of the cards and put seven face down in a line. This is the track. You can put the cards horizontally like this going along, but I don't have enough space for that so I'm going to put them vertically. The aces are the horses. They will race along the track until they pass the final card. The first horse to do this is the winner. Students can pick a horse. Divide students equally, so if you have four students, they each have one horse. With more, small teams have a single horse. It doesn't really matter which card they choose. Get them to name the horses. This is always fun. We have Slow Panda, Magic Fairy, Big Potato, and the Lemon Experience. If students struggle to think of a name, get them to say a random adjective and a random noun. For more advanced students, you can show them the names of real horses that enter races for some inspiration. Now, if you want to play the betting version, get a piece of paper and divide it into four columns, one for each horse. I'm using this dry erase whiteboard. Write the name of the horses at the top. For this version, you need four teams or individuals. For our example, we have four students, Tomohiro, Susie, Mohammed, and Carlotta. Everybody starts with 10 points. At the beginning of the race, they can choose to bet some of their points on the horses. There's no limit to this. In theory, they can bet all of their money on one horse right at the start. But they don't have to spend it all. Later in the race, they'll have opportunities to bet more of their money, but at slightly worse odds. At the beginning, all the horses have odds of eight. That means if someone bets one point on a horse and it wins, they get eight points back. Write all the bets on the betting sheet. I use colors to indicate each player, and they write down the amount of points bet and the odds at that time. Focusing on Carlotta, we can see that she has bet three points on Big Potato and one point on the Lemon Experience, both with odds of eight. Remember to deduct the points from their total at the bottom. Now we get into the race. If you're playing in person, give one student the deck of cards and put another in charge of the race track. If you're playing online, you'll have to organize all this yourself. We're going to give Tomohiro the deck and put Susie in charge of the track. Then you choose another student to commentate. In our case, it's going to be Mohammed. He can start by introducing the race, the horses, and building up the tension until the countdown. Three, two, one, go! When the race starts, the student with a deck of cards, in our case Tomohiro, takes the top card and reveals it. It's a club! That means the corresponding suit moves forward one space. That's the lemon experience. Mohammed can commentate something like, It's a great start for the lemon experience! Now, the first horse has reached a card on the racetrack. That card gets turned over. This is Susie's job. She turns over the card and it's a heart! That means the corresponding ace, in this case our heart, moves forward one space. There goes Slow Panda! Commentary from Mohammed. If the card turned over matches the suit of the leading horse that triggered it, then that horse actually goes backward one space. The race continues with Tomohiro turning over three more cards, making a total of four. 
So we had the Lemon Experience moving forward again and triggering another card reveal which helped out Big Potato. And then we had Magic Fairy charging forward into the joint lead. All the while, Mohammed is making some fantastic commentary on what's happening. After these four cards, we're going to take a pause. Everybody rotates roles. So now Carlotta is the commentator, Susie has the deck of cards, and Mohammed is in charge of the track. If you're playing with four groups, instead of changing which team does which job, just change the member of that team doing the job. Also, at this point, players can make bets again. But this time, the odds are different. For each space the horses move forward, the odds decrease by one. So Slow Panda and Big Potato now have odds of seven, and Magic Fairy and the Lemon Experience have odds of six. Carlotta feels confident about Magic Fairy, so we'll bet two of her points on that with odds of six. Meanwhile, everybody else can make lots of bets too. Now we do another round of four cards turned over and commentate on the action, with Carlotta now the commentator. Looks like Slow Panda moving forward. That's a great recovery. Slow Panda again, fantastic. That helps out. Big Potato. Big Potato charging into the joint lead and catching up is Magic Fairy. After that round, switch rolls again and allow some more bets. Keep going like this for the whole race until one horse passes beyond the final card. They are the winner. Normally you'd stop here, but sometimes students want to see which horse comes second, third and last. The commentator can describe the celebrations and bring a close to the event. If you're playing the betting version, now is the time for students to get their winnings. And only the winner counts. In our case, Big Potato got the win. So we're going to add up all of the points earned in the column of the winning horse for each player. If we just focus on Carlotta, she bet three points with odds of eight and two points with odds of two. So she gets a total of 28 points. Well done, Carlotta. And that's it. You can play another round with the points accumulated or you can bring it to a close there and grant Carlotta as the grand winner. If you're thinking of using horse race in your class, hit the like button to let me know. It also helps support the channel, so thank you very much. Horse race is a lot of fun, but to make sure students are really improving their fluency, you need to focus on the commentary. And at first, this can be tough. Less confident students won't know what to say, they'll be very shy and maybe not say anything at all. Keeping things spontaneous and interesting is a challenge, and even worse if they're speaking in front of a large group. So the way to handle this is to lower the pressure. Sometimes having two commentators at the same time gives both of them a bit more confidence because if they can't think of something, well, their partner might have something to say instead. However, I wouldn't have more than two because then the commentary becomes a jumble. One student will probably dominate and the others will not say very much at all. And a very good idea is to model the commentary at the start yourself. So you do the first race, perhaps. You can show them the kind of tone, the excitement and the language that they can use. And it's always good to write down some key phrases somewhere that students can see while they're commentating, just in case they need that extra support. For a more streamlined game, change the frequency of the pauses to every six cards or even eight. This has commentators active for a little longer and it speeds up the betting side of things. There are fewer opportunities for students to waste time thinking about whether they should bet on this horse or this horse. If you find students are taking a long time to think about their bets, this is especially important in big groups where they have different opinions, then set a 30 second time limit. Another way to spice up this game is to let students create their own horses. If you play the game several times you can have an ongoing tournament and you can find out who really is the fastest horse. Horse Race is a great game for a group that likes the excitement and is up for that enthusiasm. But if you think your students would prefer a calmer game, I suggest Narrative Telephone. I've made a video on how to play and it's right here. But for now, I've been Will from Enchanted ESL wishing you all the joy and success in your teaching. See ya.